Hi, Owen. How are you? Can you hear me? You're, you're, you're muted right now. It's like, it's like you're muted right now. Good to see you as well. Good to be seen. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We're, uh, everybody's still filing in, so we'll be uh, just a few minutes before we get started. And I'll, I'll try to give you a, a view of whoever, whoever is speaking. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Andrea. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Hey, Owen. Hey, how you doing? Happy good. New Year. Happy New Year. So good to see you guys. Tom, Tom as well. It's like we're getting the band back together here. I know. It does really feel like that. <laughs> so yeah, we're just a few minutes before we get get started here, so hang tight. I've got the camera here. I'll try to turn it as, as whoever's speaking. I'll try to. Yeah, I think I can spin this. Yeah, that works. Otherwise, someone Right. Good morning, Tom. Or afternoon now, I should say. Good afternoon, David. Hi, Owen. Hi, Andrea. Nice to see both of you, Tom. Thank you for volunteering. To, well, thank you for volunteering to extend your uh, tour of duty. We're going to have some fun. I like the pay scale. <laughs> uh, it comes up the same no matter how you multiply it, doesn't it? There you go. <laughs> All right, well, why don't, why don't we uh, get things kicked off here? Um, since a tight agenda, a lot to go over today. And um, yeah, I think uh, all of you probably have uh, an agenda in, in front of you. So I just wanted to uh, give a quick look through that uh, to kind of show everything that we're going to be trying to cover today. Um, we'll uh, you know, do a quick round of introductions uh, unfortunately, uh, at the last minute, we found out that the mayor could not join us uh, this morning. So uh, we'll tr uh, certainly try to bring him in to perhaps have a, uh, a welcome uh, for everybody at a, at a future meeting. But uh, something came up with his schedule this morning. He's not going to be able to, do, to join us this morning. Um, in, in lieu of that, uh, I think we'll kind of start off with just a, a quick round of introductions for everyone so we can uh, get the opportunity to uh, meet each other. Um, I know a lot of us have uh, already know each other, but there are certainly some some new faces in in the room. So um, why don't why don't I start off, um, and perhaps we can start with city staff after that, and just work our way around the room. So I'm uh, David Ingram. I'm the sustainability manager for the city, um, and um, certainly looking forward to to working with all of you. Uh, on a, as we work through our clean energy uh, ideas and, and, and efforts. So um, yeah, thanks very much for, for your, your service with this and look forward to, to working with everyone. So Penny, or I can ask you. I'm John Joy, I'm the city attorney. 
I'm Corey Evans, Associate with the Attorney. Dave Mays, Public Services Director. Uh, I recognize a lot of you from the camera. Um, after not a lot of the panel chat for, it was good to finally actually see some faces. Um, sustainability falls under um, the needs of my department, so that's why I'm here primarily as support and uh, for this effort. Like, well, we appreciate y'all volunteering to continue your work. For those that weren't here, we appreciate you stepping up to be part of us going forward. Diana Leonard, uh, I, I administrative assistant and had a sheer pleasure of working for Dave Mays <laughs> and with David Ingram. I will also work out as public services complex on uh, uh, Window Ray. Trent Anderson, I'm yeah. Sean Sullivan. Um, I'm a senior project manager. I've been working in offshore wind since 2014 and um, full, well, completely full time since 2015 for the project I'll be teaching. Thank you. Kat, I'll we'll start with you in the back. All right, I'm Kat Walden. I'm the Chief Sustainability Officer at KMCW. Very happy to be here. Hi, I'm Lindsay Halleck. I'm the Southeast Senior Regional Director for Vote Solar. We're an um, environmental advocacy organization that works for community policies at the state level. Um, so excited to be here. I'm Jessica Cannon. Um, I come here with the private citizen. I'm a retired regional ambassador. I also serve on the CFPUA board um, as part of their sustainability committee. Um, I worked with local grassroots groups to start Clean Cape Fear and Suda Wilmington to advocacy groups. Um, and I think Lindsay and I have worked together a little bit on sustainability. And I hope that some of you other folks. So thank you very much for this selection. I'm a Rich Smith. I'm the uh, energy manager for Center County School. Um, and I also am contracting for something called Center District that helps with K 12 energy efficiency initiatives. And I'm PJ Klein with Corning, um, business continuity manager and also uh, an energy manager for our facility around the world. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. So next on our agenda, sorry, I'm trying to. Ah, yes, sorry guys. <laughs> why don't we, uh, Owen, uh, why don't we uh, get you and then uh, yeah, just work your way around the camera there. Hey, I'm Owen Wexler. I've lived in Wilmington since 1996, and I've been a community activist ever since, and a whole bunch of boards, and trying to keep Wilmington the best place to live. Hi, my name is Andrea Bennett. Um, I was on the um, ad hoc uh, subcommittee or committee clean energy uh, task force that was put together by the mayor. And so I was really excited to continue the work on the um, advisory committee. I taught at, uh, science at Laney High School for about four and a half years. And now I work for an education company called Amplify. Good afternoon. I'm Tom Moten, deputy city manager. And uh, many of you I work with on the ad hoc committee as well as with public services and sustainability. Welcome. And we're delighted to have you here. Next up, um, just some from our city attorneys, just uh, just some of the uh, procedure goals and rules for the committee, just so we can uh, kind of lay some initial groundwork. I'm just going to remove this so that you can hear me, and I'll put it right back on. So you get the worst one first. You're talking to an attorney. I do apologize. The clerks will be a lot more fun. So we like to start off with new citizen and uh, public groups that are coming to us to advise us. We like to sit out and help folks who maybe may not be familiar with some rules and procedures in North Carolina to kind 
kind of give you a crash course in it to make it uh, more enjoyable and understandable and make sure that we don't do something we're not supposed to do. Um, so we're going to start at a high level and then we're going to work down to some nuts and bolts about this committee and I'm going to do my best to make it go at least reasonably fast, but hey, I know about how. <laughs> so, uh, first thing, uh, this group in its iteration right now, this committee, this standing committee was formed by a resolution passed by city council. And what that means, the city council set out what you're here to do. And it also gave you some rules of procedure, but it left a lot of things up to you. Um, let's go over what some of those rules were. You know, why are you here? That's always an important thing. Well, first of all, and I want you to take this as a, ooh, we got another one. Mm -hmm. You are here in an advisory capacity. You're not administrative. You don't have to go out and inspect those stormwater pipes. You don't have to go and make sure that this or that is being done correctly. You don't have to issue citations. We have people who do that for a variety of things. You also are not an advocacy group. And I know I've got a couple of folks I've heard your background, so if you know all about advocacy, don't raise your hand. <laughs> advocacy is water. And a little bit of history in North Carolina, there was a time when public employees were expected to go out and advocate if you vote for whoever was in office at that time. The legislature said, you know what, that's not really a good idea. We really shouldn't do that. So if in the packet that they handed out uh, just a moment ago, there's a couple statutes in there. You'll see one about city employees and political activity. That really doesn't apply to you as an appointed uh, person from the public. You're not an employee, but it sure covers Dave and Dave and all the city employees here. I gave it to you so you would understand what we try to do is keep the government out of advocacy. The government should be listening to folks and up the legislature and when people come to the public forum, that's exactly what our elected officials do. But what we don't do is use city resources to necessarily advocate politically this way or that. Doesn't mean that the mayor can't sign a resolution saying, hey, we really like that bill up there in the state house and it would really help us out. But what it means is we're here to advise, it says city staff, but it'll certainly go to city council as well. You're the experts. We want to hear your expert opinion. That's what I'm going to ask you to do, to remember that you're in an advisory role, not advocacy, not darn the pink or the blue or the red or whatever animal, whether it's a mule or an elephant or whatever else we have out there. We stay out of that. We want to run out of fun. So we actually try to do this with any new community that's more than we give booster shots to the same community to help them remember. We don't necessarily want to send scathing letters to the county. Uh, that, that doesn't help. It, it actually creates friction that is less than helpful. But what we do is we put together a really good strategy or a really good statement or a really good program using solar or wind power, the clean energy sources out there, that is something to model that others can follow. That, we let our actions speak, and that's what we're after. That, that's just something that you'll see. We want to go ahead and give that to you right out of the gate. The second statute there literally says, you can't use any public funds at all to endorse or oppose a referendum, a election, or a particular candidate. We, we want to stay out of that. that. That gets us into something we don't want to do. But that's the high level. You're here to advise. And your opinion is very important. City staff needs that, so does city council. How in the world do you go about this? Well, let's talk about what are you supposed to advise on? It says right there in your rules and procedures, and this is pretty vague. Tom, you kept it that way for a reason. I know why. You advise city staff on strategies, principles, prioritization, implementation. Is it better to start an electric car program? Or is it better to focus on lead certification for buildings? Where do you get the most bang for your resources? What's the, the worst thing that we have going? What's the best thing we have going? How do we get to where we want to go? These are the types of areas that we need your advice on. Also, if there's some clean energy uh, related legislation or regulations, and you know about it, you bring that up. You talk it over. You help the city through city council adopt its position. That's what, 
that's what you've been asked to do, and thank you very much for being willing to do it. It also says that you are a forum for public input. So that just opens up a whole different area. I just told you what you can't do. You can't be advocates and you're not a city employee. Let me tell you what you can do and what you are regulated by, and that is state open meetings law. So there are nine people on this committee. By your rules, if five of you get together and you start conducting the business of this committee, guess what? It's that is the committee. Five is the quorum. Under state law, we're supposed to put the public on notice of any time this committee get together. So if five of you get together and you're doing that kind of work, that is a meeting. Now, if five of you go to a conference on green energy and you're just sitting there getting information like all the other students, that's not a meeting. But if you get together in the cafeteria and literally start saying, well, let's do this with Dave Bates and let's get the city to do this, that is a meeting because it's the business of your committee. That's so. We're always here to help. Don't be afraid to ask a question. There is no bad question. I'm not turning my back on the camera too much now. So, with that said, we just dealt with a couple things. One, you are a forum for public input. If you decide that there is this great new energy, the flex capacitator that's been discovered, we've got cold fusion and banana fields will power our entire uh, planet, which would be great. And come on, I just dated myself and went back to the future, right? So, if we have that coming down and you want to talk to the public about it, and you want to have some public input, you want to be able to put something out there that you've worked on and see what the public thinks, see what the directions are. Can you do that? Not only can you do it, you should do it. It says right there, if part of your purpose is to garner public input. What you would do is you would talk to your staff liaison, say, let's notice this out, and we would set up a community meeting or a public hearing, lots of fancy names. It all ends up being the same thing. You would have your chair, who you're actually going to elect here in just a little bit. Your chair would most likely be the presiding official and help people get up there. You set some rules because you'll learn that if you don't, somebody will want to talk for 45 minutes and other people won't want to talk at all because somebody will take you 45 minutes. You'll have to put in rules and you can do that. So that's all part of what you're supposed to do. Nuts and bolts. These are going to be three year terms. Some of the beginning ones could be shorter than that so that we get staggered. You don't want nine new people all at once. Um, I already told you that a quorum is five and it's the mayor who is appointed. You will have to elect a chair and a vice chair. The secretary, I believe you said, is that gentleman. He will be in charge of minutes. So let's talk about the public eye. As I've just told you, your official meetings have to be publicly noticed. The public has to be able to come to see you. Is out there. We work with Zoom. Sometimes we do electronically. Most folks prefer the old method of we all get to see each other. We do the best we can following the advice of our board of health and the CDC, just given the particular time. Um, SAP will help you through that, but everything you do in these public meetings, if TV cameras show up, you can be on TV and you will be on TV. Minutes are kept. Now, he's not going to make them verbatim, not every little word you said, but by law, you have to give the general sense of what was discussed and what the outcome was. So, you are in the public eye, and I want you to understand that. Thank you for your service. That's a hard thing. Um, I tell a lot of folks, think about if you were an elected official, and literally every part of your job is a public record and subject to public scrutiny all the time, you have to think about that. Also, be aware. You can actually generate public records. Letters you write, programs you put together, the things that you actually make a recording of, that's going to be a public record when it's done in service to this committee and it's part of this business that we talk about. Remember that. Emails, emails are so easy to fall into. They really are. I always say, you've heard that, measure twice, cut once. I'll always say, Write twice, think about four or five times, and then really be careful when you get that to the meeting. You can't get it back. So we talked about public records, we talked about open meetings, we talked about generally how this will work, and we did thank you for your service. Is there anything else you would ask me before I hand this off to the next presenter? The technical workshops, public records. 
when you say technical workshops, is that, and I'm sorry, I'm not sure of the term, is that the entire committee working together? So I would say that, and or if we brought in like, I said we brought in like Kennedy to talk to us. Yes, that, that's going to be public record. The public would be able uh, to come to it. If it's a meeting of this committee, it's going to be open to the public. That's a good question. That's an excellent question. It tells me that actually it was interesting enough to keep you all away. <laughs> They can't always say that. All right. Thank you. I do have a question. Will yes, we sir. have to will we have to announce these public meetings two weeks in advance through Penny? I I believe that's what we had set up. The rules of procedure actually say 15 days, and that's a special local rule. Uh, state law doesn't require quite that much notice. But in this case, city council wanted everybody to have plenty of notice 15 days ahead of time. And Madam Clerk, who is always excellent at keeping us uh, ahead of the game, will take care of that. Thank you. I believe it was calendar day, so I don't believe it was business day. I'll double check that quite quick. And Madam Clerk, I believe you're next. Oh, thank you, Mr. George. Um, this is city attorney, you hit on a lot of things that I'll be talking about, but I want to also say every one of you should receive a letter from me regarding your appointment, your term, and how long you to serve. You also should receive a copy of the solicitation for this particular committee. I thought also this also it governs all the city board decisions that you all have to be um, adhered to as well. Dave Bingham is your staff person. Dave May is the next person. All I ask as clerk is that you all communicate everything to your staff person so that when you do meetings for notices, when you do have to have a committee and you're not real sure, it's going to be Dave's responsibility to make sure if you have a question to be asked, he needs to ask me because he'll tell you that if you're trying to have a meeting and it's not going to properly, it's my job to show you. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that when you get out in the community and you folks realize that you're on a particular community, this is a community that you really need. A lot of us um, want to invite you to breakfast, want to sit around the table. That's fine. If you have five people doing that, you're violating the open meeting law. And recently, the media watches everything that comes through the city of Wilmington. The attorney touched on public records requests um, and what you do is public records. There is a terminal that sits over in my office that anybody can come to you. So every time you send an email, every time you hit that send button, it drops into that terminal. Um, it may not see it right away, but the media can request it. And every time so if you don't want it to be on the front page of the newspaper, then I say pick up the telephone and have a conversation. Um, but if you come together as a group, it's public. You're, we're here to serve the public. We want you to do the job the council asked you to do. We want you to feel comfortable in getting it done, but just be reminded that you're in the public eye. And so everything is public. And, and between myself and the attorney's office, we have to make sure that we're following the rules. So I'm going to urge you to copy of the rules of the for the, for the um, board position. Um, if for some reason that you are not able to make a meeting, please communicate that today so that he can make it if, if it's excused and it's unexcused because if there's nothing there and you have three absences, the policy says you have to be removed. That's an automatic removal. Unless you can document and say, uh, I had to work, I was sick, I was out of town. He needs to know all that information. It has to be told to the staff person in advance. You can't wait until um, they send their report every month or every quarter, however you decide to do it. It will have a roster of everyone's name and how many meetings that you've been able to, to attend and not able to attend. I have to report that to the council. So if there's a problem, your staff person needs to be made aware of it. Minutes are taken and the city attorney said they need to be summary, but if we get a question from the media or something in your minutes that they want more information about, then they have to do a record request. They send it to me. I get it from Dave or whoever the staff person is. We have to provide them that clarity if we have it. If we put it on paper, if we create documentation, we got to share that documentation. Um, some of you were told you're serving one year term, two year term, three year term. That's the initial appointment. Um, when your term is up, like I think Mr. Owens' term is up in a year, Mr. Mayor take another look. He can reappoint, and when he reappoints, he can reappoint for three years. Or he can reappoint for one or two, but we're trying to get you on a regular routine as our other board that is three year, um, three year term, and you're eligible to serve two consecutive terms. Then you have to come on for a year, and then the mayor can put you back on to serve the time. Um, other thing that's very important is to 
remember that if you have to change your address or change email or change phone number, then Mr. Dave knows that. So that he may give it to me because if there's a request for such, I have to be able to provide it. Okay. Um, if any questions, I'm really simple and to the point, um, but I want to make sure that you guys are clear on what the expectation is and what the rules are. Um, when you elect your chair and your co chair, all I ask is you know, you all work with them before is to make sure the chair, of course, is the presiding officer, how to make motions, how to second motions, make sure you have a quorum to take a vote. Because if you don't have a quorum and you show up for a meeting day, he'll say, I've got four members that showed up. You can talk informally, but you can't really have a meeting without that five, five folks being present. Um, but if you want to call the committee or subcommittee, that's fine. Still got to take notes, but you can't make any motions and you can't make any decisions that you need to go on record. Does that make sense? And we talked about meeting notices. If there's a question, you'll let me know. Um, and as the city treasurer, I said 15 days, but as soon as you know, if you get on the regular schedule and you decide today you want to meet the first Monday, the second Monday, whatever that time is, then it helps us as staff because we can put it on a rotating calendar. And we won't have to worry about chasing each other down. So if you can establish what day of the week you want to have a meeting and let Dave know that, we can go ahead and put it on the calendar and it won't become an issue. If you decide that specialty, you can take your notes well, but I must advertise, I must put this meeting out for public notice. Um, if for some reason you think you need some more training, ethnic training, or any kind of training for the city training office, and myself will be happy to do that. You have to come back and do one on one with me as well. We want to make sure you guys have all the information you need um, to get the job done. And so that, uh, speaking about absences, um, be reminded that your work, your opinions, your input is extremely important because at the end of the year in November, I think it is when you report out to council, the staff has to prepare that report. We want to make sure that we've gotten all the input from the entire committee members. So if you're not present or not participating, then we miss that piece. So just please, please, and if something comes up and you decide something that you don't want to do, please just let Dave know, he'll let me know, and then we'll put it out with the And I'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have them. And if not, you tell Mr. Dave, and he'll make sure I get the questions. Yes, so email retention. So if we're having communications not as a group, but it was me and someone else. How long does it say this is? Well, it's, it's uh, we're having personal emails that are not on the city's record. Uh, and you're you talking about clean, clean energy? Within, yeah, within our committee, it's not part of this. And correct, attorney can correct me on this, but that makes sense. Is that public record or not? Public yes. Record? If you're talking about clean energy, I think it is. But it's city attorney. So, uh, what do we have to do about record retention for our, like, my company? We write emails every nine days. Yeah. yeah. That's a very good point. I should have covered this. Public records in North Carolina don't care whether it was on a city owned device or a privately owned device. It goes by the substance of the record. If it's, hey, would you like to meet for lunch and we can discuss some of that stuff? That, that has very little value. And the retention schedule say you can delete that as soon as you've seen it and you don't need it anymore. But if you get into any substance of this public work, what I would recommend you do is just send that email to Dave and that will get it on the city server and we'll keep it the appropriate amount of time. That, that's the easiest thing to do. Um, also remember, the, the worst kind of email is a mixed email where if you're sending, let's say that you did it off with a fellow committee member and you want to talk about vacation plans at Disney World. That's not public record. That has nothing to do with the community, even though that's how you met that person. That's your private email. If you mix private email and, hey, let's go to Disney World. And by the way, what do you think about that solar solution? I didn't think that'd work at all. You just mix that email. So I would send that and we would try to redact out the private stuff if um, a media request came in. I can't make a guarantee that we'd always get the redaction done. I mean, literally, we get requests for terabytes of information sometimes. So best policy, business is business, private is private, don't mix them. And if you send a, what should be a public record email via your own private email address, just forward it on today and you'll put it in our system and it'll be there. Very good question, very, very on the point. Is our contact information public record as well? Our emails and our phone numbers that we're providing to you are 
when you when you send it to the city, yes, it comes up white. And that, that's something that the legislature has struggled with that because folks feel like they should be able to send information to public officials. But then when you have members of the public who are part of the committee and say, I don't really like having that email address or that, rep, that phone number out there. What I've recommended, it's hard to do for a phone number, but email addresses, you can set up a special Yahoo email account just for this and the piece of other thing. I've recommended that to folks and I, I think it's a good policy. Or keep it in a certain folder on the key side. Yeah, that, per, that prevents me from having to deal with wanting to go on a that can spread what he wants to say or secretary of government. So will we'll all these meetings be attended via Zoom? Just curious if you were talking about like, yeah. okay, make it to three just in case of travel a while. Yeah, I think I think we'll certainly provide the Zoom option for, for all the meetings as well. We'll do it both ways and we'll advertise it both ways and we'll be covered. Okay. Um, it's just we'll have to remember when we take attendance records to note who was there on camera, Zoom, and who was acting in person. And that's what city council does. So make sure we take care of the public that we are accounting for not counting the tax. And by uh, state law, if it's a hybrid, if one person attends remotely, every time you take a vote, it won't be by all in favor of I. Right. It's roll call and you go down the list. Person Which by. frankly is, I like that way better. It takes a little longer. But now we've got a good record. We did a lot instead of, oh, well, everybody said this. Uh, I like it better. And, and they can be named. Um, I do it for council. I can give you a sample on that you'll be meeting at roll call sheets and every meeting to make sure the chair of the board and the chairman is is actually doing that. Okay. And if they vote, they have to do roll call. If you take a recess and come back, you have to do roll call. So um, it, it it does help at the end when you're trying to pull back and back. So you have to vote for what we do it. And to become chair, remember. The slightest variation from these procedures is a felony. Um, not federal, but I'm joking. The deviating from the procedure, staff can help you. It's not a felony. It's not a crime. We just go back and we fix it. We're human beings. I tell folks from the public that all the time. Do you know any organization that has human beings in it that doesn't make mistakes? We'll get it. We'll get it going. So, if there's anything else, guys, please, please let me know. Um, I got mine. So, whenever I need to, and I can email this to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We're running way ahead of schedule. You know, I just came from the air being here and we're going to talk for like half an hour. Oh, yeah. So, um, I try to get myself in the camera here as well. Yeah, so um, next up is, um, is uh, trying to get our, our chair and co chair uh, selected for the committee. Um, it's, uh, Volunteer or nomination uh, process. So, um, you know, I know, you know, this is my first time in committee as far as uh, that process as well. So, I don't know if y'all have any advice on, on how that process goes or if it's just a decision amongst. Uh, I'm sure it's someone else. It'd be nice if you had a volunteer that would step up. Yeah. You can nominate yourself. You can nominate yourself. Yes, you talk about those are the expectations for. Setting the agenda, pre-agenda. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just uh, some of the, the roles, responsibilities. Um, it's uh, uh, the chair, chairperson's um, role to. Um, I'm just trying to get to that part of the roles and responsibilities here. And they'll. Yeah, they'll certainly supervise the affairs of the committee. Uh, they'll be the ones that uh, call, you know, bring, bring meetings to order, um, help the committee run, run through the agendas, um, you know, hopefully, you know, be 
responsible for all the points of order and procedure uh, for each meeting. Absolutely. Yep, there will be um, some additional communication uh, with myself and other city staff kind of prior to the meetings, just going over the agenda. Um, so that will be uh, you know, a separate, uh, you know, smaller meeting or, or, or a phone conversation as far as. Uh, Sending the agendas for free cheap and just going over what's being covered for, for that particular meeting. So, I don't think you can have a comment there. As far as one question I'll ask is Does anyone have experience acting as a chair or a design official? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's good to have someone who's had a little bit of experience starting out as the initial chair, if they're willing to do so. Um, just the idea of being clear of all official actions take a motion, a second, and then an affirmative vote. And, and you'd be surprised how hard that can be when you're actually doing it. Absolutely. Well, I would like to comment and just add to the only thing to know about my name is Gap Talk, and I'm still the chairman of a nonprofit called Waterway, the city that raises money for our water bills. Mm -hmm. So I just like, don't know if there's like an issue with that. No. But I mean, I'm happy to do it for sure. And if I can have some assistance, maybe from the clerk on exactly the raw tool of order. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's some, something that we can uh, send out and pass along as well. Like send that out uh, to, to everyone. So. so there was a motion nominating you. Mm -hmm. Alex, I'm nominating. Is there a second for that? Second. So there's a motion and second on the floor. Is that any discussion? I just have a question. Yes. So depending on the term, they agree to be the chair for. Any discussion? Any, any anybody from uh, the Zoom meeting? Uh, questions or discussion in regard to uh, nomination for Lindsay for a chair? Great. Staff calls on the vote that we build the chair is voting. So, yeah, so, um, yeah. Roll call vote. We'll, roll call vote. Why don't we start with uh, on, on the Zoom meeting first? Uh, uh, Owen and uh, Andrea, can we get your, your vote on, on that? Just. <coughs> I think you're both on mute. Yes, I'm on mute. My vote is in high. Hands up. Andrea? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh? Thank you. PK? Aye. 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 Vice 
data that we have. Uh, the vice chairman tells her that acting chairman and the actions of the chairman. And then at such time, they shall have the same powers and duties as the chairperson. So that would be if I were gone to supervise the affairs the committee, preside the meetings, um, decide on all points of order procedure, um, and just run the meetings. Event that the chairperson is not there. Are there any nominations? Um, I'll second that. Okay. So we'll do a roll call vote on the nomination for Pat Holman. Did you guys hear that? Yep. I missed that. Pat for co chair. Or vice chair, sorry. That would be cool. That would be cool. Owen, how do you vote? Yes. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Okay, the eyes have it, and so Kat is going to be the vice chair. Okay. Let's move on quicker. Thank you. Yeah. We're, we're really disrupting the uh, the time frame of my agenda here, <laughs> which is fine. Which is fine. Okay, so it looks like we need to establish the meeting schedule. Which, um, you know, we don't have to stick to that. I think I put that in there initially, just um, at this point. So, whatever, whatever we decide, we can stick to bi monthly if we want to month. That's fine as well. Are there, I know, are there, perhaps there are there's some days of the weeks or, or particular weeks of the month that perhaps don't work. I, I know like city council meeting weeks for, for us often are pretty busy. That's the second and fourth week. First and third. First and third. Of each month, we're often busy for, for city staff. Uh, and, and Madam Chair, this is Tom Moten, if I can just make a comment. We, uh, in laying out some uh, thoughts for the meeting frequency, we wanted to establish a minimum frequency of bi-monthly, recognizing that you can do more, and oftentimes you'll find new committees working more early, but then you sort of reach that normalized stage where you're meeting less frequently. And we also want to be thoughtful of, about the burden it places on you. And so, again, we, we established that as a minimum threshold. You do have the ability to call special meetings, and the city clerk or city attorney could, could even speak to that process should you find that you need a meeting. Uh, so uh, it's, it's what we would recommend, recognizing that we're still in a pandemic. Nonetheless, if you wanted to meet more frequently, that's something that could be done, and then later make the adjustment. Thank you for allowing me to comment. Yeah, thank you for those comments. I think for, I know for myself and other others, I'm more sensitive to time. So I know everybody does work, some of us are maybe working remotely, some of us are not, but for people with kids after five, it's difficult. Um, so I'm not, sure, I'm not sure how everyone feels about time during the day, if like a lunch meeting did work for people, or if it was hard, or, um, 
I mean, we can I can either work on the final time you all care about. Typically early afternoon my best work for me. Okay. Yeah, early afternoon is nice for me as well. <laughs> Anybody on the computer? Do you guys have specific dates, times, weeks, concerns? Um, my company does no meeting Thursdays. Um, and so Thursdays in particular is an easier day for me to um, scoot down and meet in person. Um, otherwise, it's just have a bunch of meetings back to back. But I mean, with, with the Zoom option, I'm, I'm really flexible. So I would totally defer to the larger group. Well, not poo poo on that, but Thursdays are typically my busy meeting days. So that's not the same thing. Inevitably. Yeah. Um, what is everyone about meeting monthly at first? Just to kind of get into the group of things and maybe like not everything there has to be an action right now, but maybe it could just be a time for David to catch everybody up. People are probably at different places of like their awareness of city policies and city work to date. Um, Anybody against that? I, I don't know. Turn to the suggestion. Okay. The lines with yours is that we stick to the bi monthly and then we have special meetings in between. So if we start normal meeting, meeting cadence of monthly, there may be like a public expectation that we continue. Mm -hmm. So if you start bi monthly and you have special meetings in between, I agree with being monthly to start. But I don't know if you call that a normal cadence. What are the rules on special meetings? Do they have to be like uh, regarding a specific topic where we have to like, we might have to say, this is a special meeting because the yeah, energy is set up. Yeah. yeah. You have to say the purpose of a special meeting and you have to get to know the city within a amount of time to 48 hours. Well, this, this takes 15 days. 15 days so, by the time you advertise it, that must be the best time. Right, we'd have to immediately within the two weeks after our last meeting, we'd have to establish for sure what yeah. special meetings are going to be in that. Yeah, I mean, well, it could be, it be something as straightforward as just, you know, update on operations from city staff. Yes. Yeah. Just as long as that's what you're covering and nothing else. Should so have to have a, a good, tight agenda before that. Yeah, and then just to be clear, like, obviously, like, did Franny advise us on that the public is open to the special meetings as well? Wow. So it's, you know. Um, well, I mean, whether we do bi monthly or monthly, you know, it'll be the same either way, you know, probably on the city. It'll be accessible to people. Yeah. That's so a good point. Madam Chair, your group is determined that early afternoon meetings are the
use this for him. You know, we can you know, have the option to arrange desk and plenty of space to spread out. So, so, so is it okay? It's every, every, the second week of every other month for the normal meeting, and we're trying to figure out which day of the week, not Thursday. We're just, we're just saying for the next meeting. For this next meeting, and then the actual day. For the, the next one, and then coming up on the zero is the end of our Right, and then at the next meeting, we'll discuss, we'll bring our own kind of personalized schedules and figure out the actual day kind of going yeah. forward. And I can set up like a movie date, and I can work and set up a tool where, like, yeah, exactly. That people can input and we can see where the board gets things wrong. Um, so for the for the two on the computer, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, it's yeah. It's like February seventh. Does that look like you're available at one o'clock? Yes, that works for me. I have no problem with that. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we have our second meeting um, on February 7th at 1 p.m. Um, the topic to be an update from city staff on clean energy policies that are currently in place. I'll second it. Madam Chair, did your motion include that review of the schedule? Oh, yes. And to also include a review of um, members' availability for meetings throughout 2022. So not only not only policy, but, but just an update in general where they are, right? I mean, is this what things have been implemented, what things are in the works? Yeah, I think. The clean energy landscape, shall we say? Yeah, we'll have a, a greenhouse gas emission uh, report for our. our was this last year to update on? There's, um, you know, I think in some of those initial action items list that's at the end of uh, that one document, uh, mm -hmm. there, there's a few programs uh, that we have uh, some updates for, for opportunities uh, to uh, pursue. Is that a comprehensive uh, it, it was it was in the, the one document that we already provided to council, so not a comprehensive plan, but just a. <laughs> okay, so I think exactly which for the motion then should be um, make a motion to meet February seventh at one p.m. to receive a comprehensive overview of the clean energy landscape in the city of Wilmington and plan on and to review members' availability. To meet for the rest of 2022. Okay. Okay. So we'll start with a roll call vote. Owen? Yes. No, no I'm mute. No, I'm not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea? Aye. Stephen? Aye. 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 Okay. The ayes have it. So we will meet on the 7th at 1 p.m. Oh, right. Did you know that you didn't know I did here? You're like the one person over there. Um, okay, yeah, I said that we'll meet on the 7th and we will give you a very good and necessary, I think, update from David to get us all kind of on the same page um, going into the rest of the year. That'll be good. Should we have a motion to excuse Evan? I'm sorry about that. No. Yeah. Um, oh, Evan is the other uh, committee member who couldn't be here today. We'll we'll have a a separate kind of uh, meeting with him. Just uh, as you know, this meeting is being recorded, so I'll certainly uh, provide that to him as well. Um, um, but yeah, we'll be having a separate update and be sure to include them on uh, next next meeting time. Right. Arrange that so that you can push the tent as well and they have the time. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you let you know on what what date and time that might work for him. Yeah. If, if he wants to do that. Okay, so next on the agenda, David, it says review initial recommendations. 
Uh, yeah, you know, I just want to, I mean, some of these are what, what I was uh, indicating we'll have an update for the next meeting, but I always just kind of wanted to get uh, the list in front of you that we presented to the council is on the uh, kind of back side of that document. Obviously, that the first two we can go ahead and put check mark check marks by. Uh, we are done. Um, but these were kind of the low hanging fruit that we thought uh, um, we could certainly address uh, in this this first year of the committee. You know, there's certainly some some that uh, could be added to this as, as we begin to meet and, and uh, pull ideas together. Uh, there's there's some items like the, the Soul Smart program. Um, I can provide some additional data at our, 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 our next meeting, but uh, they've actually gone ahead and provided us kind of a uh, the, the, the Soul, Soul, Soul Smart team has provided um, um, uh, kind of where they think we would uh, fit right now in, in their program as far as uh, scoring. Uh, they're we actually have a Potential call with them, I think, uh, coming up here shortly. Um, but again, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you all are familiar with the Soul Smart program. I know we talked about it with, in the advisory committee, but um, uh, or, or the task force uh, committee. Uh, but it's a no cost program uh, that is, is more or less like in the private sector as opposed to municipal operations, but it's certainly a good opportunity for the city to take a step towards. You know, Increasing uh, solar capacity here in the mayor. Um, I wonder if the green, if the green building is not my specialty, so I think there are others who are more into it than I am. I know that I saw that um, the DOE just released like a new standard for you know energy efficiency and building like building energy codes, and I wonder if. Um, it would be helpful maybe at the next meeting if we could see kind of like what we have in place right now and what maybe like where are the gaps and how far are we from like what this policy would look like compared to where we are now. Okay. Yeah, there's um do we currently have any certified building? We do. Yeah, we've got a fire station, uh the uh, convention center. Um, we have some One's currently in the design and construction phase that we're looking at new certification. You know, all of this is you know without an official policy in right. place. It's, it's more uh, this kind of design, energy efficiency into you know, some of our new facilities. And then have, have a good building built, I guess, like a new building for part of have a good building built since we've done those that were not designed like as Building or yes, yes, okay. So, at some point, there is a cost analysis that the city is making. I, I would say there was energy efficiency built into those as well, but not necessarily kind of, kind of for the full on. Right. There, there's been like a fire station that can be constructed. Yeah, it'd be nice to get a kind of enough, yeah, to understand how decisions are made currently. Understand how a policy would impact that. Yeah, I mean, there's you know, certainly a lot of things we pursued, like uh, there's the pre program for peak energy, their energy modeling. Um, they've got a vendor that they use. And, you know, if you go uh, if you do their energy modeling recommendations, you get a big better pretty back at the end of the construction. So we pursued that with a number of facilities as well. So, yes. Yeah, all, all of those, both uh, kind of the number three and number four item on that list, uh, you know, are all aimed at improving the energy efficiency of, of existing city buildings. So, a lot of, lot of opportunity for us to talk about what steps we want to take further, whether that's 
would be would it be easiest for you if we were to eat, you know in between now and the next meeting email you what specific questions we may have about the facilities and the state of the facilities yeah get an idea yeah yeah sure hopefully i can have some you know, provide some additional areas that you're particularly interested in us in info did you guys get on the computer yeah, I was just wondering, um, are you referencing something that was sent out via email or is this, it kind of sounds like the first step recommendations from our report. Is that what this is pulled from? It is, correct. Correct. Yeah, a lot okay. of those are, were pulled from the report and that uh, we, uh, we presented at the council as far as some of the initial action items that we thought that this committee uh, could really jump on to right away in this first year. I mean, we, we certainly realize there there will be uh, some bigger bigger you know, perhaps uh, uh, ticket items that would require some 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 budget or capital planning for. Uh, but this initial list were, were things that uh, were low hanging fruit. If, if, if there's nothing else, so without okay. a whole lot of budget impact. So got it. Thanks. Try to work on is developing a work plan. It's like, you know, what things, what, what, where should our focus be? Yeah. And again, I think, you know, kind of related to that, which is okay, so like, you know, each organization has its own decision making processes. So, like, most recently, I was with CFQA, I'm sure we did things differently. So, I think it'd be, you know, you guys are with different groups. And so, I think it would be helpful to understand, like, is there a budget you're working with this year? Like, how, you know, Kind of how how do you pitch things to council? How does the like the actual logistics work? Um, and you could you know that that's part of the energy landscape of, of kind of what things are your priorities and, and why um, would be helpful for us to understand. Yeah, I mean I have a, a, a modest I would say uh, a budget for. Energy efficiency improvements um, uh, for, for facilities. Um, you know, typically, I, I run through that doing you know uh, LED uh, lighting retrofits, those kind of things. Uh, it's you know it's around fifty thousand a year. I can share that. Um, so that gets spent pretty quickly. Um, I just I can explain a bit here. Um, We don't operate necessarily to have a separate budget that would be added on to a building project. Say, okay, here's the building budget without the or without energy efficiency. Let's add to that based on this policy. We don't quite operate that way. We establish what the policy is and develop the budget for the building. That wouldn't necessarily fall under the sustainability budget that would fall under the budget engineering or whatever part of the city's operation was there. There's a recommendation on here about um, adopting zero emission vehicle or hybrid vehicle purchasing program. So we would expect advice from this group to help establish what the parameters of that policy may be. Then we, we would react to that um, based on whatever that policy said. Not that we would necessarily have a pot of money sitting under the side that says, okay, now take this pot of money and start that program. We, we're going to have to react to that after. We are right now, based on our normal calendar, I'm sure you're familiar with coming you know, from CFUA, our budget process starts. Well, um, kind of never, we're never out of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, our biggest, in, in terms of department wide, our biggest preparation month is January. So we're in it right now. And then we go through a five month process after that until City Council votes to approve an annual budget. 
and we're happy to give, give this committee a lot more detail about as much detail as you want. Um, the advice that we're getting from you is going to be have, is going to have to come in to staff, and we have to figure out mechanically where it fits in the best. Is it a CIP program? Is it a policy? Does it fit into a purchasing division? How does it fit into that process? And then it may have to wait on the budget, just depending on what the recommendation is. Um, each one of these things may have a slightly different flavor than the next one. So uh, David does have a separate line within our department operating budget specifically for clean energy or clean energy or energy efficiency related to our buildings. Uh, and that's a little bit unique in the circumstance, but that gives you a little bit of, a, of an understanding of how we plan to take your advice and incorporate it into, uh, into our process. Yeah, I think that's, that's really helpful. helpful. Yeah, I think that's really helpful because especially if you've ever worked in such a cycle, it's hard to understand like how these things filter and then get incorporated. Um, Madam Chair, as something just to be sure that the committee is aware, you may have to ask like what plans to come up with. Committees are normally not very good at actually doing the mold tracking of that. That's what staff's here for. Committees are either very good at knowing what they don't like, pretty good at knowing what they do like, and having options to pick from. So you can certainly look at staff and say, give me a proposed work plan where money can lodge it. And give me a proposed option that is absolutely a bare bones, and then give me one that seems to be in the city's budget, though it might be stretched a little bit, and you can look and compare and contrast and amend, but you don't have to do all the heavy I also remember the objective is for us to get the 50% clean energy and 50% electric stat for the cars by 2035. So, I mean, that's really, in my opinion, our charter. What do we have to do over the next 13 years? Uh, preparing for growth to hit those objectives. Yeah. Um, I know most of you were on the committee, but does everybody have a copy? Of a report. It's certainly accessible. We we can certainly provide a hard copy to whoever wants one. I'll just say we'll go ahead and make nine. Yeah. I'll take care of that. Is there any other thoughts about any specific that um, anyone would want data to include in the next meeting sort of update on the landscape? I know I think it's a good idea that we go ahead and email any specific questions you have in mind. Um, so that, that kind of gives them some idea of like what we're thinking about and then yes to the greenhouse gas and what that feels like definitely a great place something. A good place to start to understand where we're at. I know one uh, I know one topic that we discussed during the past course was where the EAS EMS systems and that there's not really a centralized access point for them. Uh, I would be a priority for me would be I'd be interested to hear what different systems you have and what accessibility you have to them, whether it's on site only, remote access, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, I know that's one area our, our, our buildings uh, folks, uh, director, have, have really been sp speaking about as well. You know, you know, fire, yeah, it's been kind of uh, systems all over the place. It's, you know, one type of system being installed in this one, and the next um, new construction comes along as a separate system. So I know they're really trying to consolidate that. Um, uh, and. Putting it into the building design specs that you know this is the system that we had in our other facility after what we were like this year. Dave, I don't know if you uh, 
I don't know how far along that come with like you know, testing and getting things. Yeah, that's just something that we can all hear. So it's, a, it's been somewhat of a tough nut to crack for us. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually under construction and renovation across the street right now. We have a new one for a building that was built in 1851. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it hasn't been a unique town, but I, I can, we can put together some information that we have to share with y'all about our, our progress we've made. More progress in the past five years than we sure had ever before. So, uh, but we still have a, uh, an uphill yeah. uh, push. The part of the part of it, honestly, is just procurement. Sure. The the specifics I'd be interested in are what kind of you have at each building, um, what actual kind of control you have for each building. Um, you know whether it be Manual thermostats, centralized data system, whatever that might be. And then when you can access it remotely or if it's on site only. Those would be the three things I'm interested in for each of the properties. Great question. Cool. I think the, the electrical fleet one, you know, it'd be nice to know what is the Proposed purchasing plan as it is today, anyway. Like they, does the city buy vehicles every three years, every five? What's really that life cycle? Um, and then for the clean energy piece for the operations, we touched on this very a lot during the committee. So, uh, you know, just understanding of where we're at today versus where where does the city see its growth? Like they have to have a long term forecast. Bank over a short period of time, whether it's a five year, ten year, what buildings they plan to grow up or low growth. So the last thing you want to do is start focusing on this is what I am today, and then over ten years I'm going to double the size. You'll never get the objective. You want to incorporate that. As far as the EV stuff goes, it'd also be interesting to me to hear uh, if we have data on what the average drive time or, or this drive distance in a day is for a fleet vehicle. I mean, if, you know, if we have city employees that are driving 200 miles a day, then it's going to be very hard to get any kind of EV that's going to work for them. But, um, you know, so just an understanding of what our, what the typical driving distance in a day is for the, for the city for the vehicle yeah. would be helpful. Yeah, yeah, we, we we certainly have a lot of uh, yeah that fleet annual usage data. I mean, so we've got inventory probably. Yeah, under greenhouse yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got it broken down by yeah. uh, you know vehicle type. I mean, we can we can slice it and dice it sure. however we want it. You know, if we want to look at you know just police vehicles, police cruisers are you know certainly going to be some of our higher higher mileage right. um, as far as uh, kind of uh, smaller fleet cars and you know of course our are you know waste vehicles uh you know they've got their daily routes so they're another you know, big mileage um and then i think you know i guess also just to clarify that you know a lot of the questions like that we're asking you know are maybe like in the cip like the you know you have a group and i don't and i want to ask, like i have to like reinvent the wheel it's like hey the question is a lot of time to this document feel like you and it's the link, and then you know the responsibility to bring up on that homework is is on that. Um, I don't think it's like produce a ton of documentation. <laughs> um, that's already exists. Well, locations are where these fleet vehicles are too. Where do they reside? Where employees are taking them home? That challenge of trying to charge them, charge them at their own personal homes is an mm -hmm. issue. So yeah, I'm not sure if I have that info or not. Or, yeah. We have. Uh, a lot, but that's one thing we did have a lot of um, this data on our vehicles because a lot of that is tracked through the software that they maintain in fleet. We have total, I would say, 650 plus pieces of equipment and or passenger vehicles, vans, <laughs> trucks, etc. Including the police department? Mm -hmm. Yes, them being the, the largest sector. 
Did you say 50 plus? Oh, I was like, oh, really low. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah, 650 plus. Okay, do we have any EVs now? No. No. Quite a few hybrids, but no 100%. Yeah, it's only the difference. Yeah. 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 I'm, ready, I'm ready to break that. But honestly, the, the analysis is, I mean, it's not a one and done. I mean, there's, you can look at every division within every department and figure out you're going to probably have to accommodate something different. There might be some commonality, but your police prisoners aren't going to be the same in terms of the maintenance workers. Right. And, um, one thing I would say is y'all are asking a, a lot of questions. Um, and, and the last thing I think we want to do is, is we want to keep the enthusiasm and the desire as high as we possibly can. Just understand we got all of these questions take time and effort for us to come back to you with what you're asking for. So that's one thing that we'll just Quite honestly, we have to work with, with, uh, with Lindsay and Pat to make sure that we fight off an agenda every time we meet that we can manage and give you what you're asking for. Um, so these are these are some big questions that you've come out right out of cake for. So we just want to make sure we can do it and, and have a, a meaningful meeting, uh, an agenda discussion. Um, if I could just ask or add something to the discussion is I something that would be really helpful, I think, as we try to think of the city as a whole would be some sort of dashboard of this landscape that we're talking about. Some sort of, I'm not sure the best, um, I mean, I use like Salesforce all the time. And so that's kind of what I think of when I think of dashboards is like this overall sort of graphic of reports that feed into it that are available, but maybe something sector by sector. Um, it's often hard to keep track of everything that that is going on when there is like so much in one, you know, whether it's the building side or the fleet or whatever, if we can kind of maybe put everything together in one place to have an overall view could be really helpful as we navigate priorities um, as we and make sure that nothing gets sort of left off to your point as we move forward. Well, the greenhouse gas emissions, um, someone was, I gave us an idea of like order of magnitude of where we could get the most bang for your buck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, like over 60% of our emissions right now is coming from the fleet side, um, you know, the, the other, uh, you know, buildings and facilities is um, somewhere in the below 30 percentage range. Um, and that together sector we have in there is our street lights and signals. So, which we've done it, uh, those have all been converted to LED pretty much. So, that those over the, the last four or five years have shown a dramatic drop in energy use, but it's a small sliver of uh, the emissions. So, yeah, but obviously, the, the, the fleet side is uh, where a lot of the work can be done. Yeah. So, the report that they get ready for the council week or two is a result. We, we subscribed a couple of years ago to the Ickley Clear Path Tool as our measuring stick, if you will. So that's what we have attempted to use to house all of our um, greenhouse gas emission data. So that's that's a very good a measuring stick, if you will, to see kind of where we are and the magnitude of what it is that we're trying to manage. And we, that might be something good that we can get, show in terms of detail at a future meeting. Does anyone in the group, I mean, does anyone feel comfortable reading a greenhouse gas inventory and like um, understanding like what it's telling you? Because I think like, David, I'm sure, could send out like the website to the to the Italy tool where it really explains kind of how the different scopes work with one another. So I think um, 
if you don't have experience or you make maybe like a learning curve, I know from that experience going into this. So um, that might be also something that is easy to find and look at. Yeah. It would be helpful. Did you show us any of the task force meetings? I think, uh, yeah, we had a previous report um, mm -hmm. that we can yeah. share. And they yeah. Are yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the ICLEI tool itself, when you go on to the website, it's you know it's a little sparse until you kind of really kind of drill down into the uh, you know the inputs for it. Um, you know, but the, the data that they found is, is, is you know uh, definitely a great metric. It's, it's, it's so. And this is kind of not just on this topic, but generally with other committees. Do you know is there like a um, like you'll send up like a listserv that we could send the other members information like as it comes up or um you know for example like i don't know something comes out at the state level or something comes up from the county or whatever we wanted to share with the group is that something people do or is that advised against um we can certainly call uh, so if you haven't already about the city email addresses and if you have a city email address, it's easy for us to put up a distribution brief and you can send it out. That will be on the city email. It will automatically uh, be retained the right amount of time. So you can certainly utilize that. And, and I will say emails drop to the public server. They go to about 50 different city employees, it's your department director, and also they or me or Corey. Email us, it goes to the public server. Just be aware of Yeah. Or, you know, and, and or we could, I mean, I don't know what's easiest or what people prefer, but sometimes it's nice to say, hey, group, like, instead of inputting in every single email address and another like, I would forget something for sure. And, um, but if we don't want to do that, I can sort of create a separate group. But I'm not sure what's typical, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly. Either, either try that option or see what works best for the group. So. Well, we have 10 minutes left. I think we caught up to our time. We did, yes. Yeah, some, yeah. some great discussion already. I love it. Yeah. This group. I'm, I'm excited to, to, to see the direction and advice and, and fun that this group will have. It'll be, it'll be fun for me. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to this next year and ongoing. Yeah. Is there anything else that anybody wanted to talk about or um, or bring up before we adjourn? Anything from the Zoom group? Sounds like a pop band or something, the Zoom group over here. Um, <laughs> is there any particular way that you would like us to um, flow with our communications thus far should we just send david our questions asynchronously should we filter them through is there any like spot where we can kind of collaborate if, if we're coming up with questions that we might have a lot of instead of sending you duplicate ones um what would be the best way for that david um yeah I mean, you, you can certainly yeah just I think send to, to me as, as well uh, for, for now. So, um, I, I don't know if they, if you want to copy on any of that. Or, no, or think, so. Yeah, yeah. Just, if, I mean, if David is willing to accept them all, sort of, it's from each of us individually. I think that's totally fine. Yeah, please, please just yeah, shoot them my way, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get your questions answered as, as, as best I can. Awesome. Thank you. So Madam Chair, if you and Madam Vice Chair could just hang out a few minutes after you're done after you ask for a motion to adjourn. Just want to talk to you about a couple tactical matters. So are we going to do this in the email address around or are we going to create a different one? It sounds like they're going to talk about IT. Yeah, we'll get back to that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll check on that and, uh, and, and, and send an update to all of you okay. with what that would involve. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, I'll go ahead and make a motion to adjourn. Second. And then with Zoom, we'll all just do a roll call vote, right? So um, everybody, uh, Owen, we'll start with you uh, on a vote to adjourn the meeting.
Aye or nay? Aye. Oh, Owen, did, could you hear that? You're on mute. Oh, you're, on mute. You're, you're, on, you're on mute. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, just uh, yeah, vote to adjourn the meeting. Yes, uh, uh, I. Andrea? I. Okay. Okay, so the meeting is adjourned. Right. <laughs> Andrea. Bye, everyone. Andrew, congratulations on your new job, I think, right? No, you've been there before, right? Last time we met. Yeah, no, I've been there. Okay, okay, good, good deal. All I'll right. take congratulations oh, any day for anything, though, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, I'm going to send, I want to send you an email with my phone on it so that we could communicate. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, okay. everybody. Bye, Owen. Good to see you all. All right, thank you. Thanks, Owen. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close off the meeting now. So we'll see you soon. <laughs>